Hey, this is Craig with ProLight Gear. I'm going to take you through a fun project I've been working on. Uh, I've been playing around with modifying my UPSs, my uninterruptible power supplies, and turning them into solar generators. Um, and I don't know why I do this stuff. I just have fun doing it, I guess. And I thought I'd share with you what I learned because I'm able to pull off a solar generator um, that's very capable for a fraction of the cost of what uh, like a Goal Zero is charging for their Yeti series of uh, solar generators. Um, let me show you what I've got on the table in front of me. Uh, first of all, on the far side, I've just got a solar panel in the window, and that is supplying some uh, power to a charge controller that's in, hooked up to a battery that I took out of uh, my boat. Um, on that uh, battery, I'm then running, uh, I'm running some cables off it, and I've got them to these two leads, and I'll just uh, hook this up to this uh, portable power inverter. And we should see that the light comes on when I do that. And so there's the light. Hopefully you can see that on video. I'm struggling with the lighting in here um, due to the strong backlight behind me. It's kind of an overcast day out. Uh, so these are the basic components of what goes into a solar generator. What got me started with this is I was in our local Costco, and they had a promotional display set up for those Goal Zero products. And they're great products, and I would uh, love to own them. Um, I just don't have the funds to buy all of them right now. And so I got to thinking about, well, how can I make my own? So what goes inside of those is just a battery, a uh, power inverter, which converts the electricity that the battery stores, which is direct current, to the alternating current that most uh, home products use, like that lamp. And there's also a charge controller in there, and that's so you can hook it up uh, either to an outlet or to a uh, solar panel and send electricity back into the battery, and it uh, has some circuits in there that uh, uh, prevent the battery from being overcharged and damaging the battery. So that is the basics of what is going on inside those goal zeros. Um, I was thinking, what is something that I have around my house every day that gets used every day that has a battery, a charge controller, and a power inverter? And I thought, man, I've got these uh, UPSs hooked up to each one of my computers and up to my TVs and my uh, satellite uh, receivers, the DVRs. Um, I have to use these here because I live out in the country and we get pretty um, uh, flaky power out here. Um, it goes out occasionally, sometimes it stays out for extended periods of time, but it frequently just kind of flickers or uh, goes into a low power situation. When that happens, it's really hard on electronics, but also like my DVRs, my satellite receivers, they restart. And every time those restart, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes for them to get back up and running. And oftentimes it's in the middle of a football game or a movie that we're trying to watch as a family. So I went ahead and purchased a bunch of these. Some of these I was able to find used and the batteries were no good in them. And so I just uh, took them apart and saw that inside it's a simple 12 volt, 9 amp hour lead acid AGM or absorbent glass mat battery. It's a very common battery. So I just get them at my local Batteries Plus. And I'll show you what the battery is like inside this one. Um, and I was able to pick them up for, I think, $17, so pretty inexpensive. Um, so I started thinking about, well, let's, let's see how these compare to those Goal Zero Yeti uh, solar generators. These are meant to supply a large amount of power for a short amount of time. Uh, UPSs are used you know, frequently in computer racks, um, and that's where I had some of mine placed. And they're to provide power until you get like the kerosene or diesel backup generator running and, and providing power to all those servers. Um, in the home, uh, they're used to uh, um, give you enough power to save your work and shut things down or you can plug a USB cable from your computer into these and install some software and they'll talk to each other. And uh, uh, when the power goes out, this can provide enough power, but send a signal to the computer to say, hey, time to start shutting down, we're out of power. The solar generators that Goal Zero sells, they supply a smaller amount of power for a longer amount of time. So um, at a very simple level, these have a high power output relative to the, power, uh, to the battery reserves, and those Goal Zeros have a lower power output um, and a larger power reserve. I put together this uh, 
diagram to show you how these uh, stack up against each other. Uh, starting on the far left with the Goal Zero Yeti 150, uh, the Yeti 400, the Yeti 1250, the Triplite Omni 700, which is one of the units I have on my desk, and the uh, American Power Conversion Backups XS 1500. So uh, most of these, uh, or all the uh, Goal Zero Yetis, use watt hours as a measurement. And watt hours is uh, something that you don't usually find in UPSs. Um, you need to look at the battery and determine the amp hour of the battery. Just take that times 12 volts, and that will give you watt hours. So uh, the Goal Zero Yeti 50 is 150 watt hours and puts out 80 continuous watts for $199. Compare that to like the Triplite Omni 700, which uh, has 108 watt hours, but puts out much higher continuous watts of 420 and costs $107. Go over to the uh, APC Backups XS 1500. It has 216 watt hours um, and puts out continuous watts of 865 for the same price as the Goal Zero Yeti 150. Uh, so if you look at the uh, yellow bar at the bottom, that's where I'm comparing price per watt and then price per watt hour, you can see that on the price per watt, the, uh, the uninterruptible power supplies are much less expensive. Once again, they have a large power inverter uh, relative to the size of the battery. On the price per watt hour, um, you see that they are still less expensive, but not as dramatically less expensive. That has to do with the size of the battery in terms of amp hours, uh, the capacity of the battery that's being used inside these. But that's something that's pretty easy to solve. What they have is the ability to recharge them. And so I thought, well, let's open one of these up and see if I can't just splice in some uh, wires so that I can get direct access to the battery. So I'll show you a little cutaway shot here of how I opened one up and I just used some uh, wire sp uh, splicing or connectors and uh, wired in what's called a battery tender. And uh, I use these on my motorcycles to keep my motorcycle batteries charged. Um, and uh, you can buy them from like Amazon for like $6. So my total out of pocket so far in this project is only $6. And I don't know if you can see that on video or not, but I just drilled a three quarter inch hole in the back of the case and spliced this in. So now that I've got direct access to the uh, battery, I can just plug my solar panel directly into this and recharge this. But also, I'm gonna unplug this. I can take that bigger battery and plug it directly into this. So inside here is a nine amp hour battery. That's a 140 amp hour battery. So if I connect the two, I've now created something that's you know, got more battery capacity than even the biggest goal zero. And if I uh, hook it up to this one, I've got more than enough power to power my refrigerator. Uh, and I can continue to add batteries in parallel, don't wire them in series, wire them in series doubles the voltage, wiring them in parallel uh, doubles the, the power reserve. Uh, if I wire up additional batteries, I just get additional power so I could go out to the vehicle, grab more of these, etc. One thing you want to uh, think about when, uh, if you're going to do this, is matching your um, uh, power inverter to the uh, amount of uh, power that's going to be drawn by the equipment you're wanting to power. Uh, power inverters are not 100% efficient and I looked at the various efficiency curves for the different power inverters that are out there and uh, some of them are pretty good, some of them are pretty bad. Like some of the bigger ones, if you don't draw much power through them, they're less than like 80 or 70% efficient. Uh, the ones I've been playing around with are usually slightly over 90% efficient, but you know, this is 170 um, watt power inverter. These put out, uh, let's see here, this one puts out 420 watts, these two uh, trip lights. This one puts out 865 watts. So I'm going to use this in situations where I'm powering bigger equipment like a refrigerator, etc. So all in all, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. Um, I'm going to show you this as well. I'm playing around with thermal electric generators as a way to generate electricity for these. So I'm going to build a rocket stove and uh, uh, use these uh, heat sinks to put uh, eight different 
thermoelectric coolers in there, in theory I'll be able to generate 16 watts of electricity from a camp stove. And what gave me the idea for that was the BioLite stove that you may be familiar with. I'll give you an image of it. That puts out two watts. So uh, in theory, I should be able to generate uh, some pretty good electricity out of a rocket stove using these heat sinks uh, on top of those semiconducting thermoelectric coolers. So this is kind of a new uh, video or a different video where I'm you know, normally reviewing gear at Prolight Gear, but since uh, Goal Zero is marketed pretty heavy to the outdoor space, and uh, uh, you know these can still be portable, you could bolt a handle onto these if you want to make them even uh, a little bit easier to carry around. But um, easily take this camping with me now, and uh, use it in emergency situations, etc. And I thought it was a really handy project, especially since you can buy these on Craigslist or at your local uh, used computer store, eBay, etc. Um, if the battery's dead, that's not a problem. Open it up, pull the battery out, and uh, you should be able to replace the batteries. They aren't using proprietary batteries in these. So that wraps up this video. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing our videos, and uh, stay tuned. I'm uh, uh, still working on that, but uh, hopefully I'll have something to show you on that thermoelectric generator shortly. Thanks.